Now, folks, Ben and Jerry's, the manufacturer of overpriced ice cream gloop, has taken to Twitter to denounce Pretty Patel's Rwanda policy again. Now, most likely tweeting from their luxurious headquarters in America's wealthy New England, liberal social media activists and, of course, their multi-millionaire bosses have sought to lecture British voters on how to police our own borders. Now, I don't know about you, right? But I personally couldn't give a flying fig what Ben and Jerry's think about the government's migrant policy. I mean, ask yourself this. What's next, right? Mr Kipling's view on housing? The Weetabix line on rail strikes? The Bisto take on the Northern Ireland Protocol? And why? Why are these merchants of heart disease on a sugar rush utterly emboldened and seeking, frankly, to serve spoonfuls of sanctimonious, sensationalist social media nonsense down our feeds. And I think it's because their ideological allies are actually winning the argument. Wealthy lefty lawyers here have been getting their own way on Britain's borders and our lack of control over them for years now. At midday yesterday, five asylum seekers currently attempting to use the courts to stop their deportation from the UK will not be sent to Rwanda. The Home Office capitulated before the battle began. They may well have done so for sound legal reasons, but it's just the first of what I suspect will be many such capitulations and defeats. And therefore, not the last time that we'll have to read the sneering tweets of Ben and Jerry's. Now, according to Home Office insiders, the chances of a flight taken off to deport illegal migrants to Rwanda is unlikely to go ahead. Lawyers claimed that the policy breached international and domestic law on seven counts, which wasn't accepted by a high court judge, but looks set to be challenged further with the possibility of a hearing at the Court of Appeal on Monday. That's less than 24 hours before the flight is actually due to take off for Rwanda. And it begs the question, right, who runs this country? Lefty lawyers and their elite rich cheerleaders or British voters? Will the left-wing establishment actually allow us to do anything meaningful to stop the boats arriving and their descent into lawlessness, frankly, on our southern border. We cannot turn the boats back. That's what they say. We can't deport illegal arrivals. That's what they claim. We can't prosecute those arriving. That's what they insist time and time again. I say enough of the queue jumping, enough of the law breaking, enough of the legal activism, enough is enough. We've been here before, though, haven't we? Remember when the Liberal and legal establishment lined up to block Brexit? I certainly do. We had Bully Burgo and his merry band of Remainers, including Anna Soubry, doing all they could to utilise parliamentary skullduggery and actually seek to thwart our democratic verdict to leave. And yes, Ben and Jerry's even got involved then. They released a series of, of statements and videos arguing that Brexit was the product of, the watchword of the moment, misinformation and should be stopped. Eventually, the lefty liberal legal action brought about a Supreme Court ruling that argued the 2019 prorogation of Parliament to get Brexit done and show Boris Johnson was serious about exiting the EU without a deal was illegal. But Boris fought the establishment and after reasserting the supremacy of Parliament and voters, frankly, at a general election, we beat the sneering elites. And I think we can do it again. With a new British Bill of Rights and maybe some court battles on the way, we can take back control of our borders. That promise of Brexit. It'll take parliamentary will, but perhaps, just maybe, we can wipe the sticky smile off Mr Ben and Mr Jerry and get Boris Johnson and his 80-seat majority back on track.